All right. So last night pretty much sucked for all of us, and it tore me up a bit. I wanted to kind of do a recap today because I'm just not happy with how last night turned out. I felt really good about the picks leading into the card, and as most of you know, we went 1-6. and six. We narrowly avoided the uh, mythical reverse sweep, so no good for any of us here. But I want to kind of take a look at what happened. So the Juan Adams fight, that one, I said he was my most confident pick of the entire card. And it really sucks starting off with a loss on that one. But this is exactly why, you know, people keep asking me if I'm going to put two units, three units, that kind of thing on a pick. I never go more than two units. Because if we had dumped five units like some betters do on Juan Adams, I mean, we already had a bad night, but that would have dug us even further in the hole doing something like that. So one unit at a time, slow and steady, bankroll management. That's how we're going to overcome losing nights like this where variance kind of bites us. So I actually was at the horse track for the Kentucky Derby. Did not get to watch the Juan Adams fight, but I'm looking at the numbers afterward and especially measuring the significant strikes. Um, Juan Adams outlanded Buller 35-20 to 20 in the first 23 to 10 in the second, and then 23 to 11 in the third. Juan Adams outlanded Buller 81 to 41 in significant strikes, and Buller managed to get three takedowns over the course of the fight, and somehow that amounted to a 30-27 decision for him. I don't agree at all. <laughs> um, there were there were some very questionable judges' scorecards last night. So now, if you favor the wrestling more heavily, I can understand how we might have lost that fight 29-28. 30-27 is kind of egregious, especially with the kind of outlanding that Adams did on the feet. So while we may not have won that fight, those numbers tell me that we were probably on the right side. Um, Adams is, is young. So maybe we put a little too much stock into him a little too early, but I don't, I don't, uh, you know, I don't regret that pick. Everything leading up to the fight was everything I thought it was. He fell short. So lost that one. We'll eat that. Kyle Nelson, he was a plus 190 underdog. From what I understand, he had a very hot start to the fight and the fight was one and one going into the third round. And for those of you who are not regular sports bettors, please understand, we're looking for value here with these fights. So at plus 190, when it's one and one going into third, both guys got to dig deep. And one of them is going to pull out a winner based on the last five minutes of the fight. That's when you want the plus 190 underdog. Everybody sitting there who laid the chalk is sweating bullets while we just get to cheer our faces off hoping that he pulls through. Because he's not supposed to pull through. He's not supposed to win. But Kyle Nelson showed that he was deserving of better than plus 190. So we got line value out of that pick. He didn't come through. He didn't win, unfortunately. But that's how you find value in MMA. So I don't regret the Kyle Nelson pick either. Unfortunately, we're down 2-0. But I can't say I regretted either of those. Now, the Mar Mark andre Burial fight... That's the one that I pulled the trigger on late during the show, breaking it down. I felt like I couldn't pass that spot up. And Mark andre did exactly what I said he was going to do. The first round was a bit of a feeler. Sanchez controlled that first round, but it wasn't a landslide. And Mark andre came on hard in round two. He did exactly what I said he was going to do in round two. As soon as Sanchez faded, he came on hard. And I really thought he was going to put Sanchez away in the third round. Sanchez surprised me. He dug deep and he found a third gear that I didn't think he had. So, honestly, for a guy making his UFC debut, we had plus 140 in our pocket. And that fight was going to a third round where I really thought, thought Andre was going to be able to pour it on again in round three for the win. I can't say I regret that bet either. It just didn't pan out for us this time. Sanchez showed up when he's never showed up before. Every single other fight that this has happened in, he did not find that third gear. He did not pick it up in the third round. I expected him to wither, and he always has. So we got surprised. Kudos to him. Props to him. He dug deep and, and found a way to win, which is what people do in this sport. So those three picks I stand by. Now, Walt Harris was our solo winner on the night. 
I probably could have taken him on the knockout prop and not laid the wood with him, but, I mean, easiest casher of the night, obviously. He absolutely wrecked that kid in the first round. I told you all he didn't belong in the UFC, so I was right on that one hardcore. Brad Katona, I must have, I apparently overestimated. Um, I'll admit to the mistake of picking Brad Katona. I'm not the only one that made that mistake, but Brad Katona, I thought he would have an easier time defending the takedown. I thought that his footwork would make much more of a difference and he'd be able to strike from the outside throughout the course of the fight, and that just didn't pan out. So, bad pick on that one. Didn't go our way. And uh, I can honestly say I kind of, that one I do regret a little bit because I overestimated Brad Katona. Elias Theodoru. This one's weird. This one's very, very odd. Because Elias is... That's basically... That's how Elias fights. He always fights that way. Except this time he wasn't even throwing real strikes. He was doing those weird girly... Things. Like, that wasn't even real striking. So... I kind of regret that one in hindsight. But he usually does more decent striking to pitter-patter and win a decision. I mean, honestly, rounds two and three... If he had just actually threw, thrown real punches, I think he wins that fight. Because Brunson didn't do jack in rounds two and three. Brunson clearly won round one. But in two and three, he didn't do hardly anything. The problem was Elias didn't do anything to Brunson to give the judges anything to stand on. If he had hit him with a couple more body shots, if he had thrown real punches, straight punches, instead of the weird flimsy hammer fist things he was doing, I think we win that fight. So I I kind of I don't know what happened there. I I don't like blaming a bet on a fighter, but I really just think Elias didn't show up the way that we thought he would. That one. So kind of on us maybe, kind of on Elias. I mean, maybe we should have just laid off that one. It was a pick 'em price, so we weren't we weren't laying the chalk or anything like that. I'm I'm not really sure how to swallow that one. Because Brunson didn't show up showing me anything better than I expected him to. He didn't come through and surprise us. He didn't clean Elias' clock. Like, I don't know. It's it's hard to say. Maybe we should have just passed on that fight as opposed to picking a side on it. I'm not sure. Anyway, on to the main event. I've got a real bad run going for main events right now. I don't know what it is. And Cowboy is in the same ballpark as Jim Miller, apparently where I just can't pick him right. Every single time I think that he's going to fall flat, and I go against him, he shows up and he wins, looking like a beast. And then when I go, okay, so he's back now, and I bet on him, that's when he absolutely drops the ball. And so I, I can't pick him right. I might just have to lay off of cowboy fights from now on, because I can't seem to get that one correct. I thought Al's wrestling was going to make a much bigger advantage. I thought that was going to get it done for us, and he couldn't even get in on Cerrone's legs. So that was, honestly, in hindsight, that was a bad pick. But everything leading up to the fight was exactly what I thought it was going to. Cerrone looked like death on the scales. If you guys watched the weigh-ins, I don't know how he recovered the way that he did. You listen to the post-fight interviews, and Cerrone said he wanted nothing to do with that fight. It was his worst day going into this fight. And he didn't want to warm up, the first two rounds, I think Al really was controlling the pace of the fight. He was landing big shots on Cerrone. If Al had kept going the way that he came out in rounds one and two and Cerrone didn't crank it up a notch like he did, I think Al would have put him down in the third or the fourth round. He was he was landing some big, big overhand shots, and you could see Cerrone was getting hurt a couple of those times. So once again, it's a spot where the other fighter dug deep and Cowboy found a way to push himself into that next gear and came back and bit us. So as bad as it sounds, going one and six, this is just a variant spot. We've been running really hot lately. We've been getting some decisions that went our way lately that maybe shouldn't have. We had some real big underdog caches come through. This card didn't go our way and it very easily could have. I only regret one or two bets on the card. The other ones could have been ours. So as hard of a pill as it is to swallow, this is MMA. This is what happens betting MMA. So I hope you all buckle in. I'm already tape studying. I'm already getting ready for next week. And we're going to come back. We're going to get those units back. I promise you that. All right? Let's roll. <laughs>